Hello, and welcome to Kevin's 7th Heaven. Today we will continue with Walt Whitman's Song of Myself, sections 11 through 20. Section 11 Twenty-eight young men bathe by the shore. Twenty-eight young men and all so friendly. Twenty-eight years of womanly life and all so lonesome. She owns the firehouse by the rise of the bank. She hides handsome and richly dressed aft the blinds of the window. Which of the young men does she like the best? Ah, the homeliest of them is beautiful to her. Where are you off to, lady? For I see you. You splash in the water there, yet stay stock still in your room. Dancing and laughing along the beach came the twenty-ninth bather. The rest did not see her, but she saw them and loved them. The beards of the young men glistened with wet, it ran from their long hair. Little streams passed o all over their bodies. An unseen hand also passed over their bodies. It descended trembling from their temples and ribs. The young men float on their backs. Their white bellies bulge to the sun. They do not ask who seizes fast to them. They do not know who puffs and declines with pendant and bending arch. They do not think whom they souse with spray. Section 12 The butcher boy puts off his killing clothes, or sharpens his knife at the stall in the market. I loiter, enjoying his repartee and his shuffle and breakdown. Blacksmiths with grimed and hairy chest environ the anvil. Each has his main sledge. They are all out. There is a great heat in the fire. From the cinder strawed threshold I follow their movements. The lithe shear of their waist plays even with their massive arms. Overhand the hammers swing, overhand so slow, overhand so sure. They do not hasten. Each man hits in his place. Section 13. The negro holds firmly the reins of his four horses. The block swags underneath on its tied over chain. The negro that drives the long dray of the stone yard, steady and tall he stands poised on one leg on the string piece. His blue shirt exposes his ample neck and breast and loosens over his hip band. His glance is calm and commanding. He tosses the slouch of his hat away from his forehead. The sun falls on his crispy hair and mustache, falls on the black of his polished and perfect limbs. I behold the picturesque giant and love him, and I do not stop there. I go with the team also. In me, the caresser of life, wherever, moving, backward as well as forward, slewing, to niches aside and junior bending, not a person or object missing, absorbing all to myself and for this song. Oxen that rattle the yoke and chain or halt in the leafy shade, what is it that you express in your eyes? It seems to me more than all the print I have read in my life. The tread scares the wood drake and wood duck on my distant and day-long ramble. They rise together. They slowly circle around. I believe in those winged purposes and acknowledge red, yellow, white playing within me and consider green and violent and the tufted crown intentional and do not call the tortoise unworthy because she is not something else. And the jay in the woods never studied the gamut, yet trills pretty well to me. And the look of the bay mare shames silliness out of me. Section 14 The wild gander leads his flock through the cool night. Ya honk, he says, and sounds it down to me like an invitation. The pert may suppose it meaningless, but I, listening close, find its purpose and place up there toward the wintry sky. The sharp-hoofed moose of the north, the cat on the house sill, the chickadee, the prairie dog, the litter of the grunting sow as they tug at her teats, the brood of the turkey hen, and she with her half-spread wings. I see in them and myself the same old law. The press of my foot to the earth springs a hundred affections. They scorn the best I can do to relate them. I am enamored of growing outdoors of men that live with, among cattle or taste of the ocean or woods, 
of the builders and steers of ships, and the wielders of axes and mauls, and the drivers of horses. I can eat and sleep with them week in and week out. What is commonest, cheapest, nearest, easiest is me. Me going in for my chances, spending for vast returns, adorning myself to bestow myself on the first that will take me, not asking the sky to come down to my goodwill, scattering it freely forever. Section 15. The pure contralto sings in the organ loft. The carpenter dresses his plank. The tongue of his foreplane whistles its wild ascending lisp. The married and unmarried children ride home to their Thanksgiving dinner. The pilot seizes the kingpin. He heaves down with a strong arm. The mate stands braced in the whaleboat, lance and harpoon are ready. The duck shooter walks by silent and cautious stretches. The deacons are ordained with crossed hands at the altar. The spinning girl retreats and advances to the hum of the big wheel. The farmer stops by the bars as he walks on a first day loaf and looks at the oats and rye. The lunatic is carried at last to the asylum, a confirmed case. He will never sleep any more as he did in the cot in his mother's bedroom. The jour printer with gray head and gaunt jaws works at his case. He turns his quid of tobacco while his eyes blur with the manuscript. The malformed limbs are tied to the surgeon's table. What is removed drops horribly in a pail. The quadroon girl is sold at the auction stand. The drunkard nods by the barroom stove. The machinist rolls up his sleeves. The policeman travels his beat. The gatekeeper marks who passes. The young fellow drives the express wagon. I love him, though I do not know him. The half-breed straps on his light boots to compete in the race. The western turkey shooting draws old and young. Some lean on their rifles, some sit on logs. Out from the crowd steps the marksman, takes his position, levels his piece. The groups of newly come immigrants cover the wharf or levee. As the woolly pates hoe in the sugar field, the overseer views them from his saddle. The bugle calls in the ballroom. The gentlemen run for their partners. The dancers bow to each other. The youth lies awake in the cedar-roofed garret and harks to the musical rain. The wolverine sets traps on the creek that helps fill the Huron. The squaw wrapped in her yellow hemmed cloth is offering moccasins and bead bags for sale. The connoisseur peers along the exhibition gallery with half-shut eyes bent sideways. As the deck hands make fast the steamboat, the plank is thrown for the shore-going passengers. The young sister holds out the skein while the elder sister winds it off in a ball and stops now and then for the nuts. The one-year wife is recovering and happy, having a week ago born her first child. The clean-haired Yankee girl works with her sewing machine or in the factory or mill. The paving man leans on his two-handed rammer. The reporter's lead flies swiftly over the notebook. The sign painter is lettering with blue and gold. The canal boy trots on the towpath. The bookkeeper counts at his desk. The shoemaker waxes his thread. The conductor beats time for the band and all the performers follow him. The child is baptized. The convert is making his first professions. The regatta is spread on the bay. The race has begun. How the white sails sparkle. The drover watching his drove sings out to them that would stray. The peddler sweats on his pack on his back the purchaser higgling about the odd scent. The bride unrumples her white dress. The minute hand of the clock moves slowly. The opium eater reclines with rigid head and just opened lips. The prostitute draggles her shawl. Her bonnet bobs on her tipsy and pimpled neck. The crowd laugh at her black guard oaths. The men jeer and wink to each other. Miserable! I do not laugh at your oaths, nor jeer you. The president, holding a cabinet council, is surrounded by the great secretaries. On the piazza walk three matrons stately and friendly with twined arms. The crew of the fish smack pack repeated layers of halibut in the hold. The Missourian crosses the plains, toting his wares and his cattle. As the fare collector goes through the train, he gives notice by the jingling of loose change. The floormen are laying the floor. 
The tinners are tinning the roof. The masons are calling for mortar. In single file, each shouldering his hod, pass onward the laborers. Seasons pursuing each other, the indestructible crowd is gathered. It is the fourth of seventh month. What salutes of cannon and small arms. Seasons pursuing each other, the plower plows, the mower mows, and the winter grain falls out in the ground. Off on the lakes, the pike fisher watches and waits by the hole in the frozen surface. The stumps stand quick round the clearing. The squatter strikes deep with his axe. Flat boatmen make fast towards dusk near the cottonwood or pecan trees. Coon seekers go through the regions of the Red River or through those drained by the Tennessee and through those of the Arkansas. Torches shine in the dark that hangs on the Chattahoochee or Altamaha. Patriarchs sit at supper with sons and grandsons and great-grandsons around them. In walls of adobe, in canvas tents, rest hunters and trappers after their day's sport. The city sleeps and the country sleeps. The living sleep for their time, the dead sleep for their time. The old husband sleeps by his wife and the young husband sleeps by his wife. And these tend inward to me, and I tend outward to them. And such as it is to be of these more or less I am, and of these one and all I weave the song of myself. Section 16 I am of old and young, of the foolish as much as the wise, regardless of others, ever regardful of others, maternal as well as paternal, a child as well as a man, stuffed with the stuff that is coarse and stuffed with the stuff that is fine. One of the nation of many nations, the smallest the same and the largest the same. A southerner soon as a northerner, a planter nonchalant and hospitable down by the Oconee, I live. A Yankee bound my own way ready for trade, my joints the limberest joints on earth and the sternest joints on earth. A Kentuckian walking the vale of the Alcorn in my deerskin leggings, a Louisianan or Georgian. A boatman over lakes or bays or along coasts, a Hoosier, Badger, Buckeye. At home on Canadian snowshoes or up in the bush or with fishermen off Newfoundland. At home in the fleet of ice boats, sailing with the rest and tacking. At home on the hills of Vermont or in the woods of Maine or the Texan ranch. Comrade of Californians, comrade of free Northwesterners, loving their big proportions. Comrade of Rassmen and Coleman, comrade of all who shake hands and welcome to drink and meet. A learner with the simplest, a teacher of the thoughtfulest, a voice beginning yet experient of myriads of seasons. Of every hue and cast am I, of every rank and religion. A farmer, mechanic, artist, gentleman, sailor, Quaker, prisoner, fancy man, rowdy lawyer, physician, priest. I resist anything better than my own diversity. Breathe the air, but leave plenty after me. And I'm not stuck up, and I'm in my place. The moth and the fish eggs are in their place. The bright suns I see and the dark suns I cannot see are in their place. The palpable is in its place, and the impalpable is in its place. Section 17 These are really the thoughts of all men in all ages and lands. They are not original with me. If they are not yours as much as mine, they are nothing, or next to nothing. If they are not the riddle and the untying of the riddle, they are nothing. If they are not just as close as they are distant, they are nothing. This is the grass that grows wherever the land is and the water is. This, the common air that bathes the globe. With music strong I come, with my cornets and my drums. I play not marches for accepted victors only. I play marches for conquered and slain persons. Have you heard that it was good to gain the day? I also say it is good to fall. Battles are lost in the same spirit in which they are won. I beat and pound for the dead. I blow through my embouchures my loudest and gayest for them. Vivas to those who have failed, and to those whose war vessels sank in the sea and to those um, themselves who sank in the sea and to those who sank in the sea and to all generals that lost engagements and all overcame and to all generals that lost engagements and all overcome heroes 
and the numberless unknown heroes equal to the greatest heroes known. Section 19. This is the meal equally set. This is the meat for natural hunger. It is for the wicked just the same as the righteous. I make appointments with all. I will not have a single person slighted or left away. The kept woman, sponger, thief are hereby invited. The heavy lip slave is invited. The venerali is invited. There shall be no differences between them and the rest. This is the professor of the bashful hand. This the flo float and odor of car. This the far off depth and height reflecting my own face. This the thoughtful merge of myself in the outlet again. Do you guess I have some intricate purpose? Well, I have, for the four month showers have, and the mica on the side of the truck has. Do you take it with astonish? Does the daylight astonish? Does the early red start twittering through the woods? Do I astonish more than they? This hour I tell things in confidence. I might not tell everybody, but I will tell you. Section 20. Who goes there? Hankering. Gross. Mystical. Nude. How is it I extract strength from the beef I eat? What is a man anyhow? What am I? What are you? All I mark is my own, you shall offset it with your own. Else it were lost in listening to me. I do not snivel that snivel the world over. The months are vacuums, and the ground but wallow and filth. Whimpering and truckling fold with powders for invalids. Conformity goes to the fourth it removed. I wear my hat as I always... I wear my hat as I please, indoors or out. Having pried through the strata, analyzed to a hair, counseled with doctors, and calculated close, I find no sweeter fat than sticks to my own bones. In all people I see myself, none more and not one a barley corn less. And the good or bad I say of myself I say to them. I know I am solid and sound. To me the converging objects of the universe perpetually flow. All are within to me, and I must get what the writing means. I know I am deathless. I know this orbit of mine cannot be swept by a carpenter's compass. I know I shall not pass like a child's carlicue cut with a burnt stick at midnight. I know I am august. I do not trouble my spirit to vindicate itself or be understood. I see that the elementary laws never apologize. I reckon I behaved no producer that the level one plant my house playing, after all. I exist as I am, that is enough. No, if no other in the world be where I sit content, and if each and all be aware I sit con content, one world is aware and by far the largest to me, and that is myself. And whether I come to my own today or in ten thousand or ten million years, I cheerfully take it now, or with equal cheerfulness I cannot wait. My foothold is tenant and mortised in granite. I laugh at what you call dissolution, and I know the amplitude of time. Thanks for listening to me read some Whitman. We will go through sections 21 through 30 on Friday. Please like and subscribe. Anyway, ta-ta for now. I love you all.